WL Shuffle, and today's video is an Altar of Hope quick guide, and we're doing it live on Twitch, so you're gonna get some random input from a chat room of faceless strangers. But yeah, so I've been getting a lot of questions about what to upgrade for the altar, and it's been interesting seeing what people end up doing, and these are just my suggestions on how to at least get started with your altar, because at a certain point, it won't matter as much. But this is to help you get rolling. All right, so the altar is right after the crossroads, which is a bit strange. You need candles in your account or stash, or whatever you want to call it, to access it. If you have zero, you just roll right past it. And that's kind of weird. So I'm hoping that they move this to before the crossroads because something that is strange with how it works is if you unlock a class, for instance, like say you unlock freaking uh, occultist from the altar and you already have four characters, you will not be able to see occultists until someone dies or until you restart and go back to the crossroads. So it's a weird thing like that. But if you unlock food, trinkets, items, and stuff like that from the slot machines, which you'll see in a sec, those immediately drop into your inventory until you're like maxed out on space. So be very careful if you're gonna unlock a bunch of stuff at once. All right, so altar, very pretty. Drop in here. I only have three candles because I screwed up in the last run. You know, I decided to let the game have a chance of winning, so I, I ended up throwing for, for content, but we all know. And so here, you can always look down here to see these buttons for what the altar can do here. And also, you have the recollection to see everything you've unlocked. So if you're not sure what stuff does, if you're not sure what you have, you can always come here. And it's sorted by uh, types. All right, so we'll start with the left side. The Intrepid Coast, so this is down here, but you can also click it there. This is a few different things related to not heroes. So this upgrades basically your wagon and your merchants or your nodes or whatever you want to call them. And you get wagon skins, which is probably the last thing you're going to upgrade. I really don't think anyone's going to get these until they need to, unless they really just want a couple skins. But then also pets coming soon and 25 candles unlocks Infernal. Infernal is a pretty big difficulty spike, but also if you do run it, it gives you a bunch of numbers on what's increased by how much, but it roughly comes out to overall being like 50% or so from what you normally see. Yeah. As far as this one goes, um, the first resourcefulness, first couple are pretty good. I haven't gotten these yet, but these look really good. The uh, I probably stop here at the hospital because getting a stress heal at the hospital is really nice and you know some extra relics going to the hoarder these two are very strong especially if you like to go find hoarders this one is very cheap five candles i would definitely get this as one of your first ones but for the journey these are your wagon upgrades there's a lot of good stuff in here so this upgrades the amount of equipment slots you can put on your wagon but also the amount of inventory that you start with so if you're finding yourself struggling with inventory then definitely get a few of these. I would probably stop here at the first thing of increased candles of hope on the map because after this, they start getting very expensive for like small things. Only the Valley Hoarder to be clear. What, this one? Interesting. I thought this was all hoarders. The way it was phrased. Well, there you go. So, I mean, this is still, still good. Still very good. <laughs> all right. Oh, the slot machines. So this is the the working fields. This is how you get new in items, new stagecoach items, combat items, trinkets. Pretty self-explanatory. The cost goes up the more of these you unlock. So it starts at one. You can see this is two. And then I'm imagining it goes higher. Stagecoach items don't feel that impactful. You start with storage boxes and, you really, and the flapjack griddle. So you don't really need much else, if I can be quite honest. There are not many other stagecoach upgrades that you need to be successful. So I would not even touch this. I just touched it a couple times just to do it. But yeah. In items, I would roll this until you get a couple key things like some form of food that is not a slime mold. So either apples and cheese, steak and spuds, stale bread even is fine. And if you can hit the pigs too, to build relationships, all the better. Anything past that is just extra. So I wouldn't really worry about it too much. Besides maybe stun poultice, for a certain mountain boss that likes to stun the hell out of you. So that is the only thing I could recommend from there. Combat items, there's a lot of good stuff in here. 
Um, I This is the only one I'd probably consider maxing up besides trinkets. Just because combat items have healing cells, which are very important. They have laudanum, which is in here, which is very important. Holy water is in here and it's very important. Then there's various other useful but niche combat items that are helpful overall. But definitely roll this until you at least get healing salve and like laudanum and it'll make your life much easier. If you get triage kit, adrenaline tonic, that kind of stuff, all the better. But really you want that salve more than anything. So hopefully you get it soon. Trinkets, this is really just a, a candle dump because the hero trinkets are on their altar paths and also a lot of the trinkets in here, some are really good, a lot of them are just mediocre or, you know, side grays are just not really better than anything that you already have access to at the start. So don't throw too much into this unless you, you know, just want to. There are things like nautical compass which is really fun, so I can imagine the allure of trinkets. Now we need loot boxes in DD2. These are the loot boxes. Look at that, I read a comment. Okay. The Living These City. Beaten, broken this is the big one. And yet our fortunes ride with them. Letting Wayne finish that one. Yeah, so this is, a, this is probably the biggest one. This is the one most people come to first. Um, you don't have to max Bounty Hunter, I just did that for content. But as far as the heroes and stuff go, I would say, since you start with these four, it's worth unlocking everyone. So that way, in case someone dies, you have a replacement at the inn. That is one reason to unlock everyone. But what I would say first, if you had to prioritize anything, is get Bounty Hunter. And the reason I say that is because base Bounty Hunter for, you know, even his first couple points, even at just unlocking him, is stronger than pretty much all the base heroes until they really get deep into their, their tracks here. So it's always good to have him. And, you know, four candles to, it takes five to unlock him and it takes four to hire him. That's not a huge investment. And I think he's just really good. He fits into a lot of teams easily, especially if he has more moves unlocked. Um, like I said, he's very powerful out the gates and he's, pretty easy to use, all things considered, so even new players can make good use of him. So I think they did a great job with Bounty Hunter, even though people are complaining that he's temporary. So you only get him for one region, be careful when you get him, but it's never bad to have him. I would stop upgrading him initially right here at No Escape. The rest of the stuff is cool. Finish him, uppercut, these are good moves too. If you really like him and want to dump the candles in, go ahead. But the reason you stop here at Hurlbat and No Escape is because these are the axe throw moves. This does really good damage. It hits all ranks from the back, which is insane. And then No Escape is a range axe throw that does stun and sets combo, and it doesn't take combo to stun. So it's very powerful. You can use this in a lot of stuff. Best Hunter True. What's up, Banhammer? Yeah. As far as the other heroes go, um, I would definitely say just upgrade your favorites. You know, if you if you like Grave Robber like I do, just put all the candles in a Grave Robber. Um, the extra DBR nodes are very important to have just because your death blow resist is lower than it was before. It's down to 60, so this is how you get it back. And this does make a good difference. So especially like your tanks having more death blow resist, more HP and stuff can be very helpful. As far as the paths go, um, you can definitely unlock it to the point where you get the paths you want. Like I think Deadeye for Grave Robber is good. Like you can almost stop there if you don't want to go further than this. But um... Yeah, a lot of the good paths are early. Arsonist got buffed, it's pretty good now. Virtuoso, probably the best, it is the uh, best Jester path. Tempest, it's my favorite. I, I think it's the best one. Um, Ritualist is okay as much as I don't like it. And let's see. You get Ravager with Hellion, which is the best one she has. Plague Doctor, Surgeon, the best one she has. Deadeye, best one Grave Robber has, you get that first. Sergeant, not the best path for Man at Arms, but it is very good for the utility aspects, and then Highwayman, you want Sharp Shot. But all these are good. So, put all the candles into the characters you think are your favorites, and I would say get Bounty Hunter up to like no escape. And definitely at least unlock everyone at some point. Start working on their shrines and stuff if you run out. To get their Memory. abilities. Memories. The heart that warms the this is an interesting one. As a DD2 player, watch my videos to get good at the game. True, thank you. Yeah. I knew we're fiddling with Poison Grave Robber at some point. Venom Drop is very good now. 
I would say. But, um, I don't love PD. She doesn't need it, honestly. <laughs> the stupid name. Oh, man. Okay. So, memories are permanent, you know, in quotes, upgrades. They last until the hero dies or until you abandon the run. And they're pretty costly to get started. But once you get them rolling, they're passive buffs that you spend more candles on to give your heroes. So if you want to keep using, you know, Leper, for instance, every run, just start putting memories onto him. And so when you beat the, the run, when you beat the mountain, Leper will be back in the crossroads with all the quirks and paths and the memories that he had before. So this way you can carry over your units and you can give more memories to people over time and stuff like that. But this is a really big investment in terms of candles because it takes 67 to get everything open from the, you know, from the slots to the efficiency and stuff. And they, you know, cost candles to put in and then when they die, they lose them. So this is definitely like either you just want to keep doing it and you have fun doing it and that's fine but if you want to be efficient i would say hold off on this for a while you don't have to make this the last thing you do but i would definitely hold off on on it's like the midway does quitting at an end count as a win or abandon for memories i believe it's an abandon do surviving heroes keep their relationships i don't think so berg said no i'm gonna trust berg berg is in the now okay so I think that's about it. As far as getting more candles go, if you wanna just farm, you can go up to the first couple, like the second in. Basically you wanna avoid exemplar if you're having trouble with that. And so you can cash out there and keep candles. Um, taking layers, going to the sluice, stuff like that gets you more candles. Playing on Infernal is very hard, but it gets you more candles. And the other, Thing I guess I could talk about for uh, tips here is if you're gonna if you're having trouble with exemplar, man at arms is like almost a one to one counter to that that boss because man at arms you know obviously you can get more tanking stats through here, but he has stand fast which is a defensive ability where he generates block each turn but also when it's upgraded it removes combo so that really disrupts what exemplar is doing. He can you know, move around with Rampart, hold the line so he's never out of position. He can bellow to get rid of a post, which is very huge to do, so it's very helpful. And then he can also guard people to get comboed and might die. The boss can still cleave you and stuff like that, but the fact he can guard people really helps keep your team safe. And since he's generating a bunch of block, he's always taking like half damage and he just survives. So you can get him, give him like some blight resist, and get a couple shrine unlocks and then I guess play him properly for lack of a better way of explaining it then he will do a good job in that fight if you're struggling other characters can you know do it but I really do feel like man arms is the best for that fight honestly like leper just is okay as a tank he doesn't usually die hellion can do a lot of damage and stuff but this this dude keeps your entire team safe it's really cool all right I think that's it for what I have to say Let's take a look. What am I reading here? Let's see what the, the chat says. I'm seeing TF2 stuff. It's the best train for Leper. You know, I'd have to look. But anything that like gener Oh, actually, I can tell you exactly what the best trinket is for Leper. I'll tell you exactly. It's an antiquarian trinket. It's this one, Cleansing Clasp. So if you have over 25 baubles, it destroys a negative token at the start of each turn. And this will destroy his blind tokens. So... If you have this and he's not getting weakened or vulnerable and stuff like that every turn, he will destroy his blind tokens. And that is insane. It's very good. Um, other good trinkets, Nautical Compass this is great on everyone. Um, some boss trinkets like Footman's Grog is good. It's never bad, but yeah. The trinkets are a bit hard because, you know, some of them... I guess I have to spend my, my stuff here. But the... Uh, Let's unlock some trinkets. Pristine lure! Gamba, we are Gambin. 
this SSR unlocks. Covert cloak. Okay, this is kind of good. When did this get buffed, dude? What the heck? Grave robber, is that you? That train that has 66% chance to turn blind tokens into strength? Oh my god. Time for Infernal? We're doing Infernal. It's always been like that? No way. No way, maybe. It's quite a lot of controversy about the slots lately. Where the Grave Robber is a cloak. <laughs> I would like to put Grave Robber on my back and carry her. That's fine. What are baubles? They are the currency for trinkets. So it's like the starfish, the burn books, and stuff like that. Um, the the one issue I will say with the slot machine, like, oh, it's right here, is that once you get enough stuff in your pool of items, you will not want to go further. So it's like you get a couple of food items, you get healing cell, maybe stun poultice, and some good trinkets, and then you will not touch this again unless you just want to. Because it is fun to gamble, right? No, it's not. Don't do that. But at least you're gambling virtual currency that has no real meaning, right? So, you work on that, but honestly, this is like the last thing you touch. You know, you get the items you need, then you like unlock all your heroes and stuff, and then you get the wagon upgrades, maybe some skins, and then you come back to this, no, then you get memories too, but then you come back to the working fields, and this will probably be the last thing you touch. I'm confident of that. It's only true if you're not getting many candles. Alright. Multiple paths are unlocked. Are they random, or do you choose? You get to choose paths once you unlock them. Which is very nice. I mentioned that fields unlocks carry through into the current run. I did at the start of this video. I said that whatever you unlock from here gets dropped into your inventory for that run. So yeah. But I think that's it unless someone else has a pressing issue. Yeah. Alright. Just gonna cut it off there. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. If you got any other guide ideas and stuff that you want, let me know. And we'll probably redo this once launch hits if this goes through any significant updates. That's it for this, though. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.